questions asked to me as far as how exactly I make my moonshine um, I've decided to put together a little video for you to show you exactly how I do it uh, some of the stuff that I use to make the shine uh, the equipment that I use and also the process and how to do it so if you are interested in doing some home distilling um, this would be a very informative video for you um, everything I'm getting ready to show you is, is completely researchable none of it is secret um, so what we'll do is we'll first start off with all the things you're going to need in order to make the shine. So first we're going to go over all the ingredients that you're, good, that you're going to need. Uh, first you're going to need 5 gallons of distilled water. Okay, you're going to need 5 pounds of pure grain sugar. It's okay if you just use the normal generic stuff. Uh, you're going to need a packet of yeast. And this, this yeast is actually made by Red Star. It's a champagne yeast that uh, will produce about 17 percent alcohol off of a five gallon batch and then you're going to need your grain and what I use is uh, sweet feed it's a mixture of uh, cracked corn it's uh, got some barley some oats some wheat and it also what makes it sweet is the uh, molasses that they add to it so um, you can use sweet feed or you can just use just normal cracked corn and that's basically all your ingredients. It's all the ingredients you're going to need. So next we'll, uh, we'll look at all the equipment that you're going to need. The first thing you need is a uh, big pot. Um, I believe this is either a 5 or a 6 gallon capacity uh, pot. This is what you're going to be boiling your uh, mash up in. Uh, you're also going to need a fermentation vessel. And this can be either a Culligan or a Primo or any kind of, uh, you know, plastic water water bottle um, then next you're going to need a five gallon mixing bucket you're going to need a flat strainer and you're going to need a spatula a um, couple other things is a uh, thermostat and an airlock for your uh, fermentation vessel um, and then there's a couple minor things you're going to need just like taking a uh, a, a water jug and cutting off the bottom and using this as a funnel and I'll show you that a little bit later and also you're going to need a tape measure to measure out your grain so uh, what that is basically everything that you're going to need in order to uh, to make your own shine at least the first half of it in, in order to make your wash um, so uh, next off is we'll we'll just start getting right into it all right guys so the very first step that we do is measuring out your grain and what you need to do is you need to take your grain and put it into your five gallon bucket now the amount that you want doesn't have to be exact but uh, what you want is about four inches worth of grain in the bottom of your bucket so we're just going to keep dumping until we get roughly about four inches and we use the tape measure in order to measure out and make sure that we have roughly about four inches. Take your tape measure, go all the way down to the bottom, and it looks like we have basically right around four inches.
Okay, now that we've got four inches of grain in our bucket, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick it into our larger cooking pot. So now that you have your grain inside your pot, you need to start adding your water. And we're only going to add four gallons. Even though this is five gallons uh, of water that we're going to use, we're only going to add four gallons for making the mash. Alright, we got our water into our, into our mash bucket. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and crank on the heat. And we're going to heat this to roughly about 150 degrees. And once it gets to 150 degrees, we're going to keep it there for roughly right around an hour. Um, it doesn't have to be exact. Um, you want to keep the temperature as close to 150 as you can and and just you know keep a timer for you know basically right around an hour um, so we'll come back to this here in a few minutes once it started warming up and uh, give it a good stir and uh, see how it keeps on going all right check in with you later okay it's been a few minutes and uh, as you can see I've put in the uh, temperature or the uh, thermostat into the bucket and let's just go ahead and take a little look see well, some of the grain has floated to the top, but as it gets warmer and as this grain soaks up the water, it will eventually uh, sink down to the bottom. So what we want to do is we just want to keep on giving it a good stir to make sure that the grain doesn't burn on the bottom of the bucket um, as we're heating this thing up. So just give it a good stir, make sure the grain is all mixed up. Make sure you take your temperature probe and just throw it on the top there. And what we'll do is we'll cover this back up. Check our temperature. Right now we're reading 117 degrees. And uh, we'll just continue to let it uh, heat up until we get 150. So we'll check in in just a few more minutes. Alright, so let's check and see exactly uh, how well this is going. Go ahead and give it a good stir. Make sure we get that grain all stirred around. It's not burning on the bottom. And if you notice, you see uh, some of the grain has disappeared off the top. It's starting to absorb that water, starting to sink down to the bottom, and the bottom grain actually looks a lot like oatmeal so but yep that's just the grain that we just want to keep on stirring around Let's check our temperature and our temperature is reading Let's see here it says 153 and it's continuing to go down probably because we just stirred it up so what we'll do now is we will turn down our burner to where it's just a trickle because all we want to do is maintain the temperature now we don't want to uh, make it rise anymore so yeah 150 153 like i said it doesn't have to be an exact science um, but as, as long as you keep it right around the 150 mark so what we're going to do is we're going to start our timer for one hour and we will come back in one hour and uh, that will we'll basically turn off the heat at that point and go on with the rest of the process. 
Um, however, in the meantime, you need to make sure that you are continuously stirring uh, about every 10-15 minutes. Make sure you're stirring your grain. Make sure that uh, your grain's not burning on the bottom. And then uh, within an hour, we'll, uh, we'll come back and do the rest of this process. So we'll check back in in an hour. Okay, so some of you may be wondering why we're actually doing this. And what we're doing is we are tricking the grain into thinking that this is spring. Um, when you heat up the grain, the grain thinks it's spring, and the enzymes inside the grain uh, start to convert the starches into sugars. So that's what we want is the sugar because later on the yeast is going to eat that sugar to create alcohol. So we are right now, uh, we're probably about halfway through cooking the, uh, cooking the mash. And um, yeah, just to give you a little theory behind why we're actually doing this process. So um, we'll check in here in about uh, 20, 30 minutes and see how it's going. All right, it's been an hour and let's see how we're doing. Looks like a good majority of the grain has gone down to the bottom. Let's go ahead and give this a good stir. All right. Turn our heat off. We no longer need to cook this any longer. Take our thermostat out. Alright, now what we need to do is we need to strain the grain down into our bucket. So, as you can see, I have uh, got the bucket laid out on some paper bags. Now you can use newspaper if you want. If you can't find any uh, paper bags and that is also uh, why we have our strainer and our spatula now this can be kind of a messy process hence why we have the paper bags on try to keep the mess down to a minimum so Okay, so as you can see, I did spill just a little bit, but not too much. And what we're going to do is going to spread the grain out. And remember that last uh, gallon of water that we did not use? Well, this is where we're going to use it. Because we're going to use this last gallon of water to rinse all the grain. So what you do is you just take the water, sprinkle a little on. and give the grain a good press. And what you're trying to do is squeeze as much of the water out of the grain as you can. Because the, because the grain is still holding a lot of water and a lot of sugar that is trapped in that grain. And once you got it squeezed, Dump the grain. And you're going to start all over. Same process. All the way until you have no more grain left in your bucket or in your pot.
as you can see, we have all of our grain has been separated out, and this is now, instead of mash, it's now called wash. Because all we have is just the liquid that we were cooking up. So we have all the, all the sugars that came from the grain, as well as the sugar from the uh, molasses that was in the grain. Hence why it has kind of like a brownish color to it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to let this cool because right now this water or this wash is uh, roughly right around a hundred and probably forty degrees uh, and it needs to cool down to about ninety degrees before we can add our uh, our yeast. However in the meantime though we can add our sugar. So that will be the next step in our process. Okay, now we're going to open up our sugar. And the best way I've found to dissolve the sugar into your wash is just to get this, give it a really good stir. Make sure you have almost like a little vortex going on and then just start pouring in at a moderate pace. So that's roughly about half the bag. And we'll just give this a pretty good stir. Make sure you get all that sugar dissolved. Okay, so as you can see, yeah, we got all of our sugar in there, uh, and now it's just a waiting game. We gotta wait for it to cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna put it over to the side, throw our uh, thermometer back into it, and uh, just wait for it to get down to 90 degrees. And once we get down to 90 degrees, that's when we're gonna put in the yeast. So uh, we'll come back when it's 90 degrees. See you in a bit. Okay, so uh, our uh, wash is now up to or down to the right temperature um, so now it's time to add the yeast and all we're going to do is just take this and we're going to add the yeast um, in the almost the same uh, fashion that we did the uh, sugar and all we're going to do is we're just going to give it a good stir you put all the yeast in just want to give it a real good stir make sure all the yeast is dissolved and also you want to try and uh, aerate it as much as you can try and get a lot of a uh, lot of air a lot of oxygen into it before you uh, put it into your fermentation vessel Alright, 
So now we've got our yeast in there, it's at the right temperature. Now it's time to put it into the fermentation vessel. And you'll notice that uh, uh, there's a strip here that has uh, different uh, temperatures on it. This is to make sure that you can maintain the right temperature for when uh, it's actually ferment, uh, the fermentation is going. So you want to keep it roughly at about room temperature. And um, this next part, what I said, had that funnel for with, 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 the, with the milk jug. Well, this is where we're going to use that. And uh, this next part can get a little messy, but we'll see how it goes. Yep, so as you can see, it got messy. And uh, I got quite the mess I got to pick up, but anyway, um, your wash is now into your fermentation vessel, and now all you got to do is just put the cap on and uh, let it sit. Okay, so now you see I've cleaned up my little boo boo, and uh, I have in my hand right here, this is what's called an airlock, and you can see that inside this airlock there is water okay and this prevents anything from going inside but will allow the carbon dioxide that's created to escape so all we gotta do is just cap this off and then let this sit in your corner in your laundry room where, wherever it can stay roughly room temperature 75 77 degrees right in there um, stay in that temperature for seven to ten days uh, once the airlock stops bubbling um, that you know that there's no more carbon dioxide being made uh, there's nothing else that's being uh, released um, you know it's basically done so at that point in time you can take it into the uh, uh, distillation phase um, but for right now we're just going to let this sit in the corner for about a week or so and uh, we'll get back to you in about a week Alright guys, I just wanted to show you, this is the day after we added the yeast. And what's happening is, that, like I say, you can see the bubbling that's happening. And what's happening is the yeast is eating all that sugar in there and creating alcohol. And one of the byproducts is carbon dioxide, which is now being released. So these things will bubble for about a week. And when it's done bubbling, that's when you know it's, it's uh, good to go. So we'll come back in a week and uh, check on them. Okay, it's been 10 days and as you can see that the airlocks have stopped bubbling and uh, the actual liquid, the actual wash, um, some of it has started to separate out. Some of those fine particles from the grain have settled down to the bottom. So that pretty much tells me that the fermentation is done and we are ready to distill so that will be our next step is uh, the distillation process and I will show you exactly how to set up your still and uh, do the distilling so uh, once I get the still set up we'll uh, we'll check back in okay guys so I now have the still set up uh, this is what you call a typical pot still there's different types of stills out there, but this one is called a pot still. Um, obviously, you have your pot. This is where we're going to be putting our wash into to distill out. Um, you have a copper tubing. Most all stills are made out of stainless steel and copper tube or copper. Um, some have some brass, but majority is stainless steel or copper. Um, so I've got a copper tubing going from the top of my pot down into this is what's called the uh, condenser. Um, you might find on certain shows like Shiners or whatever, 
Uh, it's called a worm, but it's really a, a condenser. And all this is is just the copper tubing wound up into a coil. Uh, this bucket will hold ice water and uh, it will condense the uh, alcohol that's going to come down from your tube down to your condenser. It's going to condense down. It's going to come out this spigot right here that goes down into a collection jar. Um, so you're going to need your collection jars and, uh, and that's basically it. It's a real simple system. Um, here and I'll give you a little bit closer view of it. Okay. Well, like I said, what we have, we have the pot right here. There's a temperature uh, thermometer at the very top right here that tells you what the temperature is. You have your your uh, copper tube that goes down into the uh, condenser. And like I said, this will be filled up with uh, ice water. And then all your alcohol will come out through your tube right there into a collection jar. Okay, so like I said, this is a very easy system to build, a uh, very easy system to use. Um, this size of pot is perfect size for doing a five gallon uh, batch. So uh, usually the first step is just to take your wash, throw it into your pot. Now what I like to do is I like to put a screen over the pot and this is going to keep any of those particles that's at the bottom of our, of our uh, wash ton it's going to keep any of those particles from going down in and settling at the bottom of the still and burning. Okay, so as you can see, all we've got left in the bottom is just all that sedimentary stuff from the grain, and we don't really want that in our still. So, put that aside, take our screen off. Okay, now there's three different uh, parts to distilling. Um, when you first start distilling, you're gonna, the very first part of it, that's going to be called the heads. And that is uh, pretty toxic. You don't want to be drinking that. Um, in a five gallon uh, batch, you're, you're usually going to separate out the first 50 milliliters. Um, that is the uh, methanol, acetone, a whole bunch of other really bad stuff. You can actually keep it to, for some cleaning if you want. Um, but you do not want to drink that. The middle part is called uh, the body and that is basically where you're going to be getting all your ethanol from. Um, you want to collect that and then at the end is your uh, the tails and the tails is where a lot of your fossil fuels and oils are at. Now you can keep those those tails and throw them into your next batch. So what we've done, we've already added, you know, our wash to our still. Um, I now have a jar of tails that I collected from my last run. I'm going to add that to it. We're going to seal off the still and then uh, turn it on and uh, get this baby cranking. All right, I've got the still all sealed up, and uh, now we're just waiting for the temperature to uh, start rising. The thermostat's going to measure the actual temperature of the steam inside the pot, and uh, the temperature, the magic temperature that we're looking for is 173. That's the point in which alcohol will start to boil out. Uh, however, um, this particular still. Um, will not start producing till roughly about 175, 178. 
Uh, it probably has to do something with the altitude that I'm at, something like that, I don't know. But uh, I do know that uh, right about 175, 78 is where this still will start producing. And uh, then we'll start collecting. So uh, we'll just wait for the temperature to start rising and get to get to the right temperature and uh, we'll check back in. Check back in. All right, so it looks like we're at about a 160, 165. So we need to go ahead and start adding our ice into our condenser coil and start cooling it down. Now, if you feel your, your copper tubing, uh, it actually should feel warm. And, and the reason why it's feeling warm is because the steam that's starting to boil off, that alcohol starting to boil off, is actually starting to travel down your tube. So what we need to do is we need to start cooling this tube down so that steam can condense back down into a uh, liquid and come out the end. Get our big bag of ice here and start adding it into our bucket. We got, uh, we got our ice down in our bucket, and uh, this should start cooling off, and uh, pretty soon we should have some uh, liquid come out of uh, the end of our tube here. But uh, in the meantime, we'll just continue uh, watching the temperature, and, um, and uh, hopefully we'll start producing here pretty soon. Okay, so it looks like our temperature has climbed up to uh, roughly about 178, 180. And uh, we've gone ahead and we've turned down the heat because uh, we don't want it to get any hotter. We just want to maintain that temperature. And as you can see, we have started to produce. So, uh, as you can see, uh, we've started to produce. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to collect the first 50 milliliters. And uh, on this jar that I have right here, it does have milliliters on the side. So uh, once we get up to 50 milliliters, we'll take that, we'll toss it, and everything else after that we will uh, keep. Okay, as we're looking down, I see we have uh, roughly about 60 milliliters. So that's way more than what we needed to collect in the first bit. So what we're going to do is we are going to grab one of our jars here. And we're just going to swap this out. So now... All we do with this is we're just going to take this and we're going to pour this down the drain. Or like I said, you can keep it, use it to, uh, you know, clean. Um, but it should smell a lot like uh, fingernail polish. Yep, which it does. And um, so there's really no point in keeping this. Now what we're doing is we're collecting the, the body of our dis di uh, blah, dis distillation. And... Uh, this will run for probably the next few hours and uh, collecting all this and then you'll you'll be able to tell just by the taste should taste actually pretty good um, and you'll be able to tell when you start running into the tails another another thing to point out is your temperature will very slowly start to creep as the more and more alcohol you pull out of your wash the, the higher and higher the temperature is going to get, even though your heat is at a, is at a, steady, uh, a steady state. So, um, usually I like to cut mine off right about uh, 190 degrees or so. Uh, 190, 192. And uh, about that time is basically when uh, your distillation is done. And you can go ahead and uh, start turning down your stove. So uh, what we'll do is we'll just check in on this here in about an hour and see how much we get. 
Alright guys, as you can see, we have gotten almost a full jar and we're still producing. The uh, temperature has risen just a tick. We're sitting at about uh, 184 right now. So, uh, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change out this jar and we're going to do a proof test. So, I'm going to take this jar out. Put a new jar in, and that right there, my friends, is good old-fashioned moonshine. And in order to test the proof of it, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit, throw it in here, Okay, and what this is, this is called a hydrometer, and this is designed to tell you what proof your liquid is. It tells you exactly how much alcohol is in there, and we are sitting right at what looks to be about 65%, which is 130 proof. Let's get this right. There you go. Hundred and thirty proof. That is no mistake in some good shine. So what you can do is you can uh, uh, when you take when you have your shine, this is final product right here. Uh, what you can do is you can either leave it in this 130 proof or uh, yeah 130 proof state and just uh, drink it as is or you can uh, add some distilled water and uh, bring this down to 80 proof like you would normally buy in, uh, in a store but as of right now this is good liquor this is good to go so we'll go ahead and uh, store that, and uh, we'll see how this next, how long it takes this next one to fill up. But yeah, we're dripping along, getting ready to fill the next one. filled up our second jar and uh, as you can see it's still producing real well and uh, our temperature has uh, gone up just another tick about 185 186 ish somewhere right in there so uh, and as you can see I've had to add some more ice but uh, yeah we're still producing real well and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch out jars again Now we've got two jars of good liquor, and uh, usually off of a uh, five-gallon um, five-gallon batch, you can get about uh, three to four of those jars with about another jar of tails that you'll add into your uh, your next batch. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, just keep on collecting, and uh, we'll come back in check in on it again. Now one thing I meant to mention is uh, your uh, drip rate. If you can get a good drip rate of about one to two drops per second, that's uh, probably a really good drip rate. Anything faster, you're probably going to be looking at getting more water than alcohol. Anything slower, you're just wasting your time. So 
Yeah, roughly about one to two drops per second will uh, be a good drip rate for you. Well, as you can see, we have started to fill up. Uh, I believe this is jar three. So let's see what our temperature is. Temperature is right at about uh, 188. So as you can see, it's creeped up a little bit more. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change this one out and put in another one. We'll just let this go ahead and keep on collecting and as you can see we've got three jars of shine ready to go and um, we're probably coming probably fairly close to the end we'll probably get one more jar before we start running into the tails so we'll this will be a four jar batch and uh, we'll, uh, we'll this will probably be the last jar that we get before we run into the tails and then we'll probably collect another jar of tails and that'll be it All right, we're on jar number four, and jar number four is uh, pretty much full. And let me just take a little taster tester here. That is actually still some pretty damn good liquor. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep on collecting until I start running into the tails. Um, you can usually tell when uh, the tail, you start getting into the tail end of your run because uh, it'll, the, the taste will definitely change on you and um, it, your, your, uh, the shine will start to get a little cloudy so you know you're getting a lot of water. Uh, let's just check our temperature. Temperature says 190 so that tells me that I'm getting pretty close to the end, but right now I'm still getting good liquor out. So uh, I'm just going to change out the jar here. I'll probably get about another half jar out of it before uh, before I start running into the tails. There we go. We'll uh, hopefully get another half jar and then uh, start collecting the tails. And uh, as you can see, we got four good jars of liquor out of just this one batch. Hopefully, get about four and a half. And um, yeah, so uh, we'll check back in while I start running into the tails and show you guys that. All right, this is now our fifth jar. And uh, I'm pretty much going to go ahead and stop collecting at this point. Um, the, I can tell that the taste is just starting to turn. So uh, we're starting to get into our tails. And all my ice has melted. So yeah, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this still just continue to run. Uh, let's see here. Temperature is at 192. So we're just going to you know continue to let this still run. And I'll collect whatever comes out, and that will get thrown in into the next batch. So, yeah, the, we are pretty much done with uh, the actual distilling process as far as the stuff we're going to keep and, uh, and actually drink. Okay, guys, so that right there, that's how you make moonshine. Uh, I hope this video has been informative for you. Uh, please, if you have any questions, leave a comment, and I will get back to you and try and answer it as best as I can. Um, yeah, so have a good one.